Greetings and salutations, travelers of the internet, and welcome to the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna. We'll be your wise or not so wise mentors for today's audio adventure into all things storytelling. And today, we're specifically talking about music, not musicals. We've done that already. Mm -hmm. But specifically, cinematic music moments. We're talking about musical scores, if you will. Yes. Um,. I think when we were talking about this, I said specifically no TV shows, right? Did I say movies only? Correct. We're doing movies. I It'd forgot be a totally that for, different list. I know. I forgot that for a half second. I have an honorable mention that's a TV show. That's fair. That's but fine. It's because it's the credits song and it plays before every episode. <laughs> so. I bet I know. I bet I can name it right now. What do you think it is? Outlander. No. Really? Okay. I was, okay. But I do. You know what? Yes. That would be on it. <laughs> um, but I was specifically trying to pick songs that did not have lyrics. Like, I was going for, like... Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Even though some of mine technically have lyrics, but they're they're not English. They're, Same. They're, like, if choirs like, doing overture yeah. sounds. But Yeah, if it's, like, a choral piece. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. But, like, but the Outlander song has lyrics. Like, it's right. a song. Um, no, it's the Downton Abbey um, the like uh, intro song uh, they play before the credit during the intro credits, it just okay. like it just feels so it feels nostalgic, even though I have no nostalgia to that time period because it did not exist yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. But it's so it's so like it sets the tone perfectly yes. for the show. You know. Yes. It gets you in the mindset of that time period. Exactly. And I just love it to, to pieces. Like, the mm -hmm. cinematic nature of that whole show is just perfection to me. Yeah. It's so good. Anyway, well, anyway we're this not isn't about talking that. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but before we get into our main topic, I should tell you that we have our new read-along, which starts next week. Woo! Woohoo! And we're going to be reading A Magic Seeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn. And the reading schedule is up right now. So mm -hmm. check our socials, YouTube, wherever, um, to get that reading. And I will put it in the description of this video as well. But I don't Sweet. have it handy right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot that I needed to have it handy right now. But it will be in the description of this video what you should read for next week. But anyway. Or in nope. the description of the podcast if you're listening on one of the podcast platforms. It'll be available. Yes. Go find it. It's out there. Promise. So, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, favorite cinematic music moments. Yeah. How do you want to do this? Because I don't, mine aren't like in a specific order. See, mine were, I have mine numbered. I also have 14 of them. 13 since we took down Abby off <laughs> early. Wait, I thought you said top five. I did. Okay, so then okay. I was trying to pick, <laughs> I know, this is where I was like, pick five. And you're like, that's going to be impossible. And I said, no, it's not. Just pick your five favorite. And then I went to make my list and was like, oh boy. <laughs> Including my honorable mentions, I also have exactly 14. Hey, okay. <laughs> so I technically wow. only have 13 now since we technically did the Down Abbey one. But okay. Um, so then I was trying to pick which of these were my top five and that was incredibly mm -hmm. difficult. Yeah. It was, it was, so I, when you first mentioned doing this as a topic, I was hesitant because I thought it was going to be too, too vague in, in that I would have too hard of a time, like picking from all of my favorites because mm -hmm. there are so many. Um, and it was like, it wasn't difficult of me to think of moments in movies that have really, really awesome music for me to put down, but it was hard for me to like pick <laughs> like yeah. you're saying which ones to single out because i also didn't want them to all be from one franchise i wanted to make them all from different franchises yeah um so that's what i did um yeah i'm gonna have like a blanket statement here i feel like my picks for the lord of the rings movies mm -hmm. like honestly i feel like i was just throwing a dart at a, at a wall of excellent balloons <laughs> 
excellent balloons. <laughs> That's um, hilarious. And also, it was hard to pick because even though each sound like tract will have a title or a name, right? It will cover multiple. Yeah. Because it's orchestral, right? And it plays through the whole right. movie, and it blends so well together. Like the Howard Shore is a musical genius. Mm-hmm. Um. So it was hard for me to pick. Songs from the Lord of the Rings. So I don't know if the ones that I actually ended up picking are, like, my most fave. But in the moment that I was trying to pin it down, these are the ones I came up with. Mm -hmm. When we get to them. So. Cool. Is that fair? That is totally fair. So. I can't wait to get into it. I know. Um, Okay, so let's do our top five. They don't have to be in any particular order unless you have one that absolutely stands out. Is your number one? No. Well, I will, I will, I will save the ones that were like the immediate, like the, the first two are mm-hmm. like ones that came to mind immediately. I'll save those for last, but the other ones mm-hmm. I'll, I'll do those first. Okay. So okay. do you want me to go first or sure. are you going to read them? Go for it. I've got Test Drive from How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Um, oh, that's so good. Ooh, also I made a playlist on our YouTube channel. Oh. Where we can drop the songs in oh, the that's playlist. Fun. So I already okay. did mine, but you should do yours too. Okay. And then we'll make it live okay. when this episode goes live. I will do my best because, like you said, some of them are um, like orchestral and they cover a lot of ground. But well, I'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, just you. I'll try. A lot of <laughs> if there's like a, a motion picture soundtrack, a lot of them are broken up and just grab the one that's like closest right, right, to right. what you're thinking. Yeah, but anyway. yeah, Test Drive, uh, Test Drive from DreamWorks, How to Train Your Dragon, is a really, really, really popular um, musical yeah. score that people use for a lot of. They're like, it's it's all all over TikTok too. Like everybody yeah. loves this song. Um, oh yeah, people if, put it over it, a lot of their like D and D themed stuff, yeah. any fantasy themed thing. You might yeah, not epic. know that that's what it's called, but if you operate in like the fantasy sphere on like TikTok at all, mm-hmm. you for sure heard this song. Yes, and for context in the movie, it's when it's when Hiccup is trying to figure out his tail contraption for mm-hmm. Toothless, yeah. so that Toothless can fly and he can ride Toothless, and so it's yeah. called Test Drive, and that's why. And yeah. it's just such a it's such a beautiful. Um, and like powerful and triumphant song once it once like the the main oh, yeah. chorus hits it's incredible it's such a, it uh, gives you chills every time so it does. I'm yeah okay I feel like I every time we do one of these lists I go watch a different movie and I'm like oh my gosh I did uh-huh. like you said that and I was like DreamWorks does have really amazing soundtracks they do. They I didn't do. do anything from Prince of Egypt even though. Mostly because I classified that in my head as a musical, and we same, covered I had that the same. as musical. Okay, okay. I had the same cool. exact thought. I didn't put any Prince of Egypt okay. either because most of my favorite songs on there are musical numbers anyway because it's like right. someone singing a solo. So, yeah. Right. I'm with you. Okay, okay. That makes me feel a little better because I was like, oh, no. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I will do my... Um, oh, I didn't put this one on my five. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh oh. That's okay. I'm gonna do um, kind of in the same theme as Downton Abbey, but not mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. soundtrack for the 2005 Pride and Prejudice. Ooh yes, it's so beautiful. I'm mad at myself for not thinking of that one too. Yeah, that's a great. That has a, and I'm not even like a huge Pride and Prejudice fan, but right. like that the music in that movie is incredible. Mm-hmm. And the cinematography, like oh, chef's yeah. kiss. So beautiful. Um, Specifically, I picked The Secret Life of Daydreams and Dawn. Like, I felt like both of those were, like, Um, top tier. Okay, I'm going to try to... So it's like, like the. I mean, they're all kind of... They're all piano. Mm -hmm. Do-do-do-do-do. You'll listen to it on... I can't even do it. It's on the the playlist. But, like, it's one of the songs that, like, plays under a lot of the, like, wide shots... Yeah, it's got like the sweeping piano. Is is mm-hmm. it the one where Elizabeth, not Elizabeth, mm-hmm. she's mm-hmm. 
Oh, wait, she is Elizabeth. Lizzie Bennet. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's also Elizabeth Swan yes. in Pirates of the Caribbean. So, that's funny. That's really funny. I just now realized that. But mm-hmm. is it when she's like standing on the cliff and it's that yeah. big sweeping aerial? Okay, I know yeah. exactly what song you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and I also, I wrote down um, that the music is written by Dario Marinelli and it's performed by jean Yves Thibault, which I could be okay. totally butchering. I, so I did good my of homework, you to have dude. The composer, I, wrote down I don't. The names and the composer, specifically performance on that because it's piano, like it's all. Yeah. Like one guy performing the whole soundtrack, but. I do not know who composed the music for How to Train Your Dragon, but. It's okay. Hats off to them. <laughs> yes. It is great. It's probably Hans Zimmer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Or it's probably Bear McCreary or something. Mm. That wouldn't surprise me either. Oh, I don't have any Bear McCreary on my list, which is a. Dang he does shit. a lot of TV show stuff and yeah. like video game stuff. He's one yeah. of my favorite composers, though, for sure. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah, he's he, up there in like my top three, okay, probably. Okay, you guys, right now the Emmy announcements are coming out, and Beer McCurry did not get picked as a nominee, which I think is dumb. Criminal. Anyway, anyway, okay. <laughs> okay, so my turn mm-hmm. once again. Okay, Totoro I'm... makes the trees grow. Oh, yes. I didn't. Oh, I didn't pick <laughs> Totoro, and I love Totoro. Um, it's when they're, they're, <laughs> when the girls are are out looking at Totoro with his little henchmen at night, and they're like, uh, doing circles around the, uh, the, the little patch of yeah. ga- the garden, and they're like doing their their dance and the song in the, the background, umbrella. and it makes me cry without fail. Yeah, every single time did you see that tiktok video i sent you of the couple that was doing it yes and she didn't know that he was trying to propose to her and she was just like full committed to the totoro bit she was like oblivious (laughs) she was totoro in that moment (laughs) wow hilarious so cute yes that's that is my next pick excellent choice your turn again i don't know the composer for 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 Totoro. You did good, though. Um, okay, it's probably so a Japanese I, name. Probably. <laughs> anyway. um, one of my honorable mentions is is a Miyazaki movie. So. Okay, good. Um, okay, so I've got The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Mm. Specifically from Western Woods to Beaver's Dam. So that's like when the siblings are making the trek um, mm-hmm. to the beavers. And the composer on that is Harry Gregson Williams. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, y'all. listeners, listeners, you couldn't see it, but there was such a smug satisfaction <laughs> on her face just then. Look, I feel like it was sometimes absurd. You come like you'll pick topics and have done like all this research. Yeah. And you'll come like with the intent to educate, which I so appreciate and love about you. And I was like, this time I'm doing my research when I pick these dang songs. So I did. All right. That's fair. I know the composer for the rest of mine because I just do. Are they all the same? I was <laughs> no, they're also, not. They're actually not. Okay. I was also um, curious to see like how many of my composers duplicated. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. None of mine duplicate, actually, because I specifically wanted my top fives to be all in different franchises. So uh, that's just kind of how it panned yeah. out. Yeah. But the uh, the Totoro making the trees grow, I thought that one might actually be the one that we matched up on. So oh. since you didn't pick it, we might have all different I, picks. I do absolutely adore that song, and I'm mm-hmm. annoyed at myself for not thinking of it. <laughs> I I thought about the Narnia movies, but mm-hmm. um, they didn't make it in my top five, and I forgot to put it in my honorable mentions. But it, they do deserve a spot because the music is very good. I have another um, one in my honorable mention. There was a lot of that music that I was like, "Ooh, this is good," but it's not like it's not embodying like the the spirit of adventure and like that I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, specifically from Narnia just Aslan's theme in general mm-hmm. like whenever that motif pops up I really love that yeah yeah um agreed anyway so my turn mm-hmm. so this is we're in the middle of the list now yes um this I don't know 
the specific name of the song, but it's a theme that pops up throughout the second and third Pirates of the Caribbean <gasps> movies. That's my number three. I'm curious if it's the same one. Is it the Will and Elizabeth theme? Okay. It's mine is One Day by Hans Zimmer, and it, the second half of that song is the Will and Elizabeth theme. Or it's, okay. it has motifs of that. So, yeah. yes. It has like the main theme, like the the new version for those two, and then the Will and Elizabeth theme. So that's funny. Okay. We did match up um, on one. The Will and Elizabeth theme is really, really pretty, especially mm-hmm. um, the moment like when they're when they're married on the ship. Yeah. In the third in the third movie. Yes. And they, they finally kiss. And it's just so comedic with Barbosa uh. doing it while he's like fighting and stuff. It's hilarious. But then yeah, that moment and also when they're like alone on the beach. Mm-hmm. It's just such it's such a beautiful and also simultaneously heartbreaking song because of like yeah. how it ends up with them. Yeah. Like how they have to live their lives oh, after and the, the violin. The violin yeah. on that piece. Oh it's beautiful and yeah. heartbreaking and in- incredible and Hans Zimmer <laughs> yes. is the composer for the Pirates yes. of the Caribbean movies yes. the first three for sure anyway I don't know about the yeah. last I don't know about the newer ones but for sure the first, first three. three um so yeah, yeah. Hans Zimmer uh, yeah. great theme I love that theme whenever it pops up it's great so yeah I also as I was listening to that I was because I was like looking for a very specific pirate song and that mm-hmm. was the one I was like this is it one day Hans Zimmer and even like the part of that song that's not the Will and Elizabeth theme, like the way that the music emulates waves, like it comes Ooh. in and then it like the next like line, oh my gosh, it's it's musical genius mm-hmm. and just beautiful. I just remembered another song from that that is going in my honorable mentions. So okay. that's one more for my honorable mentions. <laughs> I am not okay. adding any more. Too bad I am, and they're gonna hear about it. I so. may ditto. I may ditto some that you say, but okay. Yeah. So um, I. So hey, we did get one in common. We did. We'll see so what should happens I, on the next two. Should I move on to my next one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Battle of Heroes: Anakin versus Obi Wan in Episode Three. Oh, okay. Excellent choice. Epic. Epic. Like it I has the nostalgia. Known. It has the nostalgia factor mm-hmm. for me, and. It's, um, it's just, I remember seeing that in the theater and Mm -hmm. just being so blown away as a child by just like the fight choreography and the music and the setting of like Mustafar, this lava planet, it's all fiery and, um, it's just, and that fight like cut in between the Yoda Palpatine fight at the same time and like weaving Duel of Fates into it too. So good. So Battle of Heroes by John Williams. Love it. Um, from episode three. That is my next pick. I actually don't have any Star Wars in my top five, but it's fairly oh. arbitrary. I, it's fairly random. Yeah. And I'm yeah. realizing now, like, yeah, we'll talk more about Star Wars in a minute. But um, mm-hmm. Okay, so my next one is um, from the Felser of the Ring, Eamon Hen, which is, of course, Howard Shore. Um, and specifically the oh, okay. moment, it's where Frodo and Aragorn are on Eamon Hen, and, Fro- and Ar- Frodo's, like, realizing that he has to leave the Fellowship. And Aragorn mm. is sending him off with his blessing. And, like, mm-hmm. it's this very, like, beautiful moment of, of like, of, like, I can't even, like, describe it. It's this beautiful moment of, like... Letting go. Letting and go. And letting Frodo go do his thing. Yes. And, like, understanding that Aragorn cannot be with him for the rest of this even though he would be and the yeah. music that's under that whole sequence and then as the urukai are coming down the hill ugh, that horn comes gives, in yes it gives me goosebumps oh. every time so i feel that very a, good about that pick yeah. that is a great moment yeah. yeah i don't think about the music from that scene often enough though that is great yeah. that is great music um mm-hmm. from lord of the rings that i don't think about often enough and howard shore <laughs> yes, Howard Shore, the mm-hmm. m- the legend, the man, the myth, the legend. Yes. Um, okay. A what's titan your last of, co- of composition? Yeah, okay. for sure. My my last one is also from Lord of the Rings. This okay. is from Return of the King. Okay. This. I wonder if this matches. What do you think it is? Well, I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna pick. I just wonder if I have the same one. 
Okay, okay so your next one is also from Return of the King. Mm-hmm. This is Gandalf and Pippin talk about death. <laughs> oh, no. Um, about the same sequence, but like okay. close, but yeah. Right. It might be in it's, there. It might be in the same tract. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But basically, Gandalf and Pippin are sitting, like they've had to retreat back to the second level of the city, mm-hmm. and they're behind the gates, and the orcs are pounding on the gates trying to get in mm-hmm. um, to wipe them out. And Pippin tells Gandalf, I didn't think it would end this way. And then Gandalf launches into this beautiful, mm. uh, he's like, end. Oh, the journey doesn't end here. This is just another path that we all have to take. And he launches into this beautiful <laughs> speech about about dying and how it's it's not so bad and and he talks about like what happens when you die and like what you see and it's just this beautiful imagery and the music in the background is repeated later on when they're in the gray havens and they all leave to go to the undying lands and yes it's it's beautiful and it makes me tear up every time and pippin says well that, that doesn't sound so bad and gandalf says no no it isn't and then uh, they kind of steal themselves. They have their resolve back. Um, it's just this beautiful moment of no matter what happens, you know, it's going to be okay and we're doing what's right in this moment. Yeah. And it's just, it's so, so beautiful. So that is my Lord of the Rings pick for Love my, it. in my, in my favorite that music. Phenomenal pick. I love how we have both picked moments from the Lord of the Rings that are like these tender moments between two men two different men like two different groups yeah. of men but like having these tender moments of like we are doing the right thing we are on our paths and this is yeah. where we're supposed to be um ugh. cuz you can tell in that scene especially that Pippin like he's saying I didn't think it would end this way and you can tell mm-hmm. there's probably some regret behind that of like mm-hmm. if I if I hadn't been an idiot and like looked into the mm-hmm. Palantir earlier and like it roped up into this whole thing, like he had been wanting to leave Minas Tirith for so long. <laughs> like, yeah. um, he was like, so uh, where are we off to next uh, earlier yeah. in the movie? And so he's in this moment of like, wow, I think I'm actually going to die here. Um, yeah. And then Gandalf just being, because in also earlier in the movies, he's so stern with Pippin and yeah. he's like, he, he is always on Pippin's case and and just always calling him a fool, fool of a toque. Mm-hmm. But then in this moment, you get you get like he knows like this isn't the the time for that. Yeah. This is this is time for encouragement and like a heartwarming moment, and it's great and I love it. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, no, I thank you. <laughs> I I love it. I, you know, listener, we we always talk about how we could go on about the Lord of the Rings and any yeah. excuse we get. But um, so my last pick for my top five is also The Return of the King, mm-hmm. also Howard Shower, <laughs> oh. um, and it's The Ride of the Rohirrim. Mm. Yeah, see, that was almost it. Yeah. But I pivoted. Yeah. Um, I love the moment you picked, but I also love that moment of the Rohirrim coming into yeah. Pelennor Fields and just, um, like, there's so much about that scene, and it's carrying so much weight because we know that mm-hmm. so much loss is coming with that battle. Yeah. Um, and just, and not just, like, it's the loss of Theoden, but it's also, in a lot of regard, it's a loss of innocence for Eowyn and even Mary. Like, Mary's oh, been yeah. through some stuff, but he hasn't been in the middle of a battle like this before. Yeah. Um, and it's just such a, a pivotal moment in the whole story, too. Like, this is a battle mm-hmm. that really could have turned the tide of things. Um, and they're here, I'm answering the call, even though... Gondor didn't come to their aid. Um, yeah. You know, so it, it's a beautiful moment. And honestly, um, I wanted, I couldn't find the song. So this is going into my honorable mention, but it would probably be in my top five if I could have found the song. Um, mm-hmm. But it's where the beacons are being lit. When Pippin oh, lights the beacons yeah. and all the beacons are going across the mountains, that motif is <sighs> stellar. Well, it's the Gondor theme. It's just yeah. that bum, bum, bum. But that specific yeah. moment where you're mm-hmm. watching the mountaintops get lit. And it's like, oh. Amazing. It's happening. Yeah. Pippin did it. It's happening. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a, Oh, man, that's such a great moment, too. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So that's that's all of our fives. Yes. Um, so honorable mentions. Do you want to... Yes, take, I want to go. Turns with these I want to well. yes, and I want to go first because I want to get this one in because I feel bad that I didn't have any other Miyazaki. 
Okay. Songs. Okay. So Howl's Moving Castle, the oh, Merry yeah. Go Round of Life, which oh, is yeah. like the the song that everyone. I get it's another mm-hmm. one of the songs that you you may not have known that it was Howl's Moving Castle if you haven't seen the movie, but you have for sure heard the song if you if you oh, listen yeah. to like fantasy playlists. Um, for sure. And it's like one of the main themes, so it comes up a lot in the movie. But it's so like whimsical like it embodies mm-hmm. the movie so well because it's just like pure whimsy mm-hmm. and a little bit of chaos yeah i love it and it's also like just a just a, a drop of like epic fantasy sound like yes. with the <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. it's a perfect blend of like flavors for yeah, yeah. <laughs> lack of a better term absolutely anyway yeah um so I want to mention this one because so I had like three songs in my mind for what I would pick for my favorite Lord of the Rings song. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of them, it's kind of a cheat because it's like the same theme that plays during the Gandalf and Pippin moment. But I just I decided I liked the Gandalf and Pippin moment more. But it's when um, Sam says, I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. And then he picks up Frodo and carries him up the mountain. And the music swells. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was one of my honorable mentions. I love it. Mm-hmm. Good pick. Um, I'll do my other Lord of the Rings one just to be in line keep with on, you. Keep on Cause theme. I, yeah, because I picked one for each movie. That was my goal. Right. Um, so for the two towers, I had the King of the Golden Hall, and that's the part where Theoden is transformed mm-hmm. back into himself. Yeah. Um, and that that music that undercuts that whole scene is just, I yeah. honestly, Howard Shore, genius, ph- phenomenal. And I think mm-hmm. I know we're not talking about TV shows, but Bear McCreary did a fantastic job embodying that musical essence yeah. for the Rings of Power show. So yeah, for sure. Um, look, you're such a horse girl. Look at you. You had I Rohan really... for your top pick, and you had. <laughs> You know what? It's funny. I don't think about that phase of my life very often, but I did 100% have a horse girl phase. You did. You had it a was, saddle. It was fairly short-lived. Yeah. But um, it definitely happened. <laughs> you have ridden horses have. more than a lot of people that I know personally, probably. Well, so. Uh, okay, we I, we're also from an area of where like agriculture and like horses are very common, so I don't know if that's necessarily true. true but I've certainly true. Rid, ridden a horse more often than some people have. Mm-hmm. Um, so still still in my Lord of the Rings honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Um, concerning hobbits oh, from yes. Fellowship of the Ring. Yes. Just when when I want to just feel happy and forget about this big scary complicated dumb mm-hmm. world that we live in mm-hmm. that's a great song that's a great it song is. to do that with <laughs> my favorite thing about that song is that it's also our mom's favorite lord of the rings song and she can't but she does the off it right <laughs> yeah she does the like it's not even the harmony like she's she's like humming a line in the song but it is not the melody no yeah it's, it's like deep it's in the song endearing it's 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 fun and it's it just makes me so happy, yeah. That's a great pick. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, like the whole all the whole soundtrack for all of them. Yeah, yeah. Top notch. Um, okay, so my second Narnia song is also from mm-hmm. *The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe*. Um, it's a Narnian lullaby. Oh yeah, Mr. Tumnus with the because it's flute. so haunting. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it gives me the creeps, but like in the best yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also like, okay, you mentioned like an Aslan, the Aslan theme being one of your favorites mm-hmm. in Narnia, in which I totally agree. And I was listening to the stone table because I wanted, I wanted that juxtaposition of like the creepy white witch, like, mm-hmm. um, and then the Aslan return, but there's a gap. Yeah. They're not the same songs. Interesting. So. Okay. But um, anyway. Um, also great so, music in that movie, just for yeah. the record. Who is the composer for that movie? Um, Harry Gregson Williams. Harry Grayson Williams. I feel like I've heard Gregson. that name before, too. Probably. Um, 
Okay, so I'm not quite done with Lord of the Rings yet. That's fine. I've got, well, okay, you actually, you already said one of mine, the charge of, like, Rohan in mm-hmm. Return of the King. Um, but for for sheer, like, um, like one of the best bad guy songs and just, like, the emotional dread mm. of when this happened, um, and that's just the meanest Morgul theme mm-hmm. when um, this mm-hmm. crazy green beam gets emitted out the tower and the Witch King flies up yeah. and, like, leads the armies out of Minas Morgul. Um, that's such a, just a wicked theme. Like it's yeah. just, and just the dread and the fear on everyone's faces and Minas Tirith when they see this happening from afar. Spooky. Spooky. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember seeing that in theaters and like feeling the like anxiety in my chest, just like squelch. Yeah. You know, like, ooh. Yeah. ooh. It's almost like, like Howard Shore made us, like Frodo in that moment because he's like clutching his chest because of the Witch King's yeah. um, wound that he gave mm-hmm. him. And it's like the music did the same thing to us and yes. it made all of us go like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> eee. Yeah, 100%. In a, in a beautiful, perfect way. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There we go. That's all my um, Lord of the Rings ones. Okay. okay. <laughs> I have one Star Wars song. Weak. I know. Continue. <laughs> well, okay. I love the Han and Leia theme. Like, there are so many motifs in Star Wars that I absolutely adore. Mm-hmm. But I, like, could not... My brain could not pinpoint them when I was thinking about this list. Sure. But um, I did come up with The Phantom Menace. Do you know what I'm going to say? Duel of Fates? Yes. Yeah, great one. And Which is funny because it was, like, part of... It's part of the one that you picked from episode three. Like yeah, it cuts there are back elements and forth. of it in there. Yeah. Um but yeah, Duel of Fates, John Williams. Just like that whole fight scene. Top tier. Um with Qui Gon, Darth Maul and Obi Wan is just It's like so one good. of the most hated movies in the franchise, but that is one of the best lightsaber fights in the franchise. Yeah. And you cannot convince me otherwise. Like it makes your heart race. Like the mm-hmm. beat of the music is so intense and like it doesn't let up. Um and you can you can just like feel it resonating in you. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Um, well, that was also one of mine, so now I don't have okay. to say it. Um, but I'm gonna go with the intro to Revenge of the Sith when it mm. it's, you've got you know, like your standard title card music, you know. Yeah. But then it goes, it, but then it goes into like the uh, the music for the battle over Coruscant, and it mm-hmm. pans down, and it just goes into pandemonium. Yeah. And like uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan's ships are like zipping in between all this carnage and like the music is just it's so cool. That's yeah. so that's that's on my honorable mentions too. Is um do 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 Yeah, that's is that part the of the main it. theme. But is that the main yeah. Star Wars theme or is that the Tatooine theme? I mean, I feel like it's it kind of treated as, it's treated as just like a main Star Wars theme, but yeah. it is uh the binary sunset is yeah. Oh, how did I not put that on my list? Yeah. Binary so I was Sunset. Just, so as you were talking, I was going to say Binary Sunset needs to be on. But I didn't know that's what it was called, so I'm glad you know. There we um, go. I will also put that on mine. So okay, I'll write it cool. in. Um, yeah. So if, I just, I just if need to like actually think about Star Wars. and like the, I just need to like play right. the movie in my brain, and I didn't do that. If you'll allow me to just polish off my Star Wars picks, yes. um, I, would, I would say the Imperial March... Is also classic. Yes. Um, very, very cool. Great bad guy song. Mm-hmm. Gets stuck in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't have a way to like put it in my honorable mentions because it's, it's not so much like a song as much as just like a fun musical moment. Um, you probably already know about this. But at at the end of episode one with that parade scene. Oh, yeah. How, how that that is actually the same. It's just a major key of the Emperor's theme from Return yeah. of the Jedi. Yeah. Um, so if you didn't know that, go, go like watch those scenes back to back, just pull it up on YouTube and watch them back to back. And you'll see that the parade scene at the end of episode one is just the mm-hmm. emperor's theme in a major key. So that's just a great way of subtly hinting who the Phantom Menace really is, um, yeah. in that movie. So yeah, it's great. Uh, that's, a, that's a great shout out. Yeah. Great composition. So anyways, so that's all my Star Wars stuff. You guys, isn't it so cool how music can tell the story in the story. Yeah, man. Like, it's amazing. That's why, that's why music 
when I do cry for like movies or video games or TV shows or something, it's mm-hmm. usually because there's some kind of music thing happening at the same time where they yeah. they bring a certain motif back that we haven't heard in a long time, and it just like strikes you at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like just a well placed arrow straight to the feels from the composer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, while staying on a theme of space, okay. You are not going to expect this. I don't believe. Is it Star Trek? No. Okay. So it's a TV show. There's movies. There's tons of Star yeah, Trek yeah, movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Get mostly, out of a here. TV, mostly a TV show. <laughs> um, I would say predominantly Star Trek is a TV show that has movies occasionally. It started off as a... It's, you're right. Okay. Fine. Um, okay. No. Interstellar. Oh, yeah. The Cornfield Chase, which is yeah. also Hans Zimmer. Yeah, for sure. Um, that movie has such a funny place in my life and in my heart. It's very strange. Can um, you go see that? Like while Hope yes. and I were like having a date or something. Yes, we it was, like super to, snowy. Yes, um, we went. So Hope and I have the same college for our alma mater, um, but we were not there at the same time. And you and I went to that town. Um, so mm-hmm. you guys could have a date and I could like visit some college buddies. Um, but like the, the timing of plans didn't jive super well. <laughs> so like my plans were done by the time your guys' date started. So I Oops. went and watched Interstellar by myself in this, in this theater, um, which I think was like maybe the first or second time I'd ever watched a movie by myself in theaters. Um, honestly, this, it's a great experience. I love doing that. It is. I need to do it more. Um, yeah. but this song, The Cornfield Chase, is so beautiful mm-hmm. and so harrowing. Um, I cried. Like, yeah. Interstellar is not a movie that I feel like I would normally cry to, but the music put me in that place. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and, like, I've only seen the movie maybe twice. But, because it's a lot. It's very deep. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is a lot. Um, but yeah, that song. And I love, it's so funny, it'll pop up on TikTok fairly often. And I'm like, oh, it's the Cornfield song. <laughs> yeah. It's the Cornfield song that makes me mm-hmm. cry. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one that has that piano in the background too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. You're a sucker for piano. I am. I am. Yeah. I wish I played it better. I wish I played it at all. <laughs> Besides just like Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> special shout out. I didn't. I didn't have it on my list for honorable mentions, but I think Hans Zimmer also did the mu- music for Inception. Mm-hmm. I think that's right. Um, and Inception and Interstellar kind of live in the same place in my brain in terms of their music. Um, that's fair. They're 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 very like trippy, um, brain tease type intellectual like i don't know i don't know it's a, it's, an, yeah. it's a, uh, there's lots of synth happening there's like you know you know yeah. what i mean i didn't like interception as much as interstellar inception you said what interception I, I combined them my bad <laughs> you did inception i didn't yeah, like yeah. inception as much I, I don't think they're i see what you're saying like as far as like mental power watching them <laughs> they kind of operate yeah. at the same level yeah um but inception made me just feel motion sickness most of the time that's fair. Yeah. yeah. That also came out at the, at the same time when like 3D movies were like yeah. a, a trend. So, yeah. Yeah, that's part anyway. of it too. Um, that wasn't actually on my list, but I just, it, I thought of it because you mentioned Interstellar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm done with Star Wars, done with Lord of the Rings. Okay. These are my, okay. So I have, how many do you have left? I have two. Okay. I'm just going to do my Pirates of the Caribbean honorable mentions. And then you can do one. Then I have one more. Then you can finish it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, just the whatever the standard Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. theme is, like at the end of the first one, when mm-hmm. uh, Jack Captain Jack Sparrow is um, drink up me hard as yo ho when he closes the compass, and yeah. then it just like hits the theme. Um, yeah, which is part of the one day I think. Like it's it gets incorporated into okay. a lot of the music. Yeah, it's just the main so, theme of the franchise. That's why, and I, it's, that's why I picked one day, because it kind of covered all my bases. But yeah, I know yeah, exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, and I will yeah, probably yeah, yeah. ditto all of the ones that you say right now. 
I also love the moment where, like, just Jack Sparrow's introduction as a character when he's mm-hmm. standing on top of the sinking mm-hmm. ship. Um, that's a really... Yeah. Like, that moment lives right free in my head. Yes. And then he just, like, effortlessly shoom, boom, just steps on the dock yes. and starts walking. And all the people on the dock are just watching him like, what in the world? Just I love it. The best character introduction in <sighs> cinema. Probably <sighs> ever. Like, you will not, in my yeah. head, top that. Um, so... Now, in so that's from the first movie. Second movie, the Davy Jones theme with the organ. Mm -hmm. So cool, Mm -hmm. so haunting, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, Love it whenever that comes up. And from the third movie, the Hoist the Colors um, song, which in the beginning is kind of like a musical number because there's like people actually singing it, but it gets incorporated like throughout the whole movie. Yeah. Um, And in particular, I like when... Um, the East Indian Trading Company shows up at the Pirate Cove and like all hope is lost. So like this is, this mm-hmm. is an insurmountable amount of like enemy ships. We're all going to die. And then um, Elizabeth gives this inspiring speech um, and then the Hoist the Colors theme plays again and everyone hoists up their pirate flags and it's a super cool moment. Um, I love that specific, that specific moment where that theme plays. Yeah. You know what? I know that those movies are forever old. The okay. first three pirates movies, mm-hmm. um, but we we should do an episode talking about them, like we should rewatch them oh, and do an and episode like actually unpacking the three of them, pick them apart a little bit. Yeah, That'd because be they're they I, they were such a pivotal moment of our like teen oh, yeah. years oh, yeah. and younger, um, like that. Those are movies to see, like they're up yeah. there with like the Lord of the Rings movies as far as like making it a thing. Yeah, like going to see the next mm-hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean movie mm-hmm. um, was right up there with like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and for Lord sure. Rings and like those were the three franchises. I feel like because like Marvel stuff didn't start coming out until we were in like college ish. Yeah, for me anyway. that's right. For me, anyway. that's right. I think like the first Avengers movie may have been my senior year or like my mm-hmm. first year in college. So mm-hmm. none of that. None of the Marvel movies are on my list. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, and, like, yeah. we didn't we didn't watch Harry Potter growing up. But, like, it would have been... Like, I feel like Pirates was our version of Harry Potter as far as, like, yeah. that age group of movies. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Um, which, like... And we didn't grow up watching Harry Potter, but, like, the Harry Potter theme is very cool and, like, mm-hmm. whimsical. Mm-hmm. And definitely sets but, the mood. But yeah. we didn't grow up with it. So I didn't put so, it on my list. Yeah. It doesn't come to mind, even though it does have good music. Um, so those are my three moments from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. Um, I don't have any more pirate songs on my list. Fair. Specifically Pirates of the Caribbean. But I do have a pirate song from Captain Blood. Yeah. Wow. The, what uh, a the deep main, cut. I know. The main theme of Captain Blood. Yeah. The trumpet. Yeah. Um, is that, and a, that, ba, 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 da, ba, da, yes. that one? Okay, yeah. And that is Eric Wolfgang Korngold. Love that. Uh, okay. And it was his first motion picture that he did the music for. Great job, dude. Yeah. You have, so is Hit that your last one? Park. No, I have one more. Okay, okay. So <laughs> you make me want to say one more, and that is Robin Hood with Errol Flynn. <laughs> That's my last one. Okay, okay, then you'll, we'll save it for that. I'll, I'll give my last one, and then you can give that one, because I was like, how did I forget about, man, eating Godfather's pizza and watching Errol Flynn on movies. a Friday night and watching Errol Flynn movies? What a core memory. Oh, mm-hmm. I have to do that sometime, just because. Next time you're here, we should do that with Mom and Dad. We should oh, get... That sounds great. Right? We should get... Okay, we really need Papa Murphy's pizza, because that's what we did a lot, but... And I have a pretty specific, I have a specific memory of like thin crust, yes, just beef pizza Bacon from Godfather's. For Watching yeah. those movies, oh, yeah. so good. Anyway, oh, you're right. You're right. My last theme, I had to find something Disney. Um, mm-hmm. so I was committed. I was like, I have to, I have to think of something from Disney because like music and Disney just go hand in hand, yeah. but I couldn't pick one that was like a musical moment. <laughs> it wasn't a musical. 
Right. Which mm-hmm. leaves me pretty much exclusively with Pixar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope you picked a Wally song. No, but oh. you're still going to be pleased. Okay. It's just um, the Buzz Lightyear theme. Oh, yeah. That... Yes. And then he, you know, yes. specifically from like the the intro of Toy Story 2 when it's like Rex playing the video game. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's like one of the best cold opens ever, by the way. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Rex playing the video game and hearing all the Buzz Lightyear music and all that. Yeah, I'd, the Buzz Lightyear theme has a special place in my heart. Yeah. Technically, when it, the pirate when it, movies are Disney. Just throwing it out there. That's true. I was thinking, but, like, animated. Yeah. But um, specifically uh, in Toy Story 4, so, like, everyone cried for Toy Story 3, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because all of us were going to college that year, and it was just, like, a knife to the heart. It was literally um, the year I, year after I went to college. Yeah. They did that on purpose, I swear. Oh, they for sure um, did. They knew all but, the 91 babies were in college that year. Yeah. Rude. <laughs> Um, so anyway, in Toy Story 4, his theme comes back for, for something. And that was Mm -hmm. a moment where, yeah, that was the one moment that Toy Story 4 made me cry. And it wasn't even like something deep or emotional was happening. It was just the Buzz Lightyear theme started playing while he did something cool. And it just like hit me at the perfect time. Um, I guess I just needed to hear that again. And that's when that one made me cry. Healing some inner child for you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I feel bad that I didn't have any other Disney on my list, but I feel yeah. like a lot of them are covered by the musical genre. For sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so my last one is The Adventures mm-hmm. of Robin Hood with Errol Flynn, Love Ambush it. and Sherwood specifically. Yes. Um, which is also Eric Wolfgang Korngold. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize that he yeah. just he has composed several Errol Flynn movies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know if he's done more besides those two or is I that, didn't look. Those, okay. I didn't look beyond those two. I would, I wouldn't be surprised if he also did Seahawk cuz that one I agree. S- sounds similar to Captain Blood anyway. Mhm. Um yeah. For yeah, sure. That's so cool. That's one of the best Robin Hood movies ever and Oh like, my gosh. Hands down. Like it like looking like it is pretty campy, like with the tights and like, the, but it's it's but still Robin Hood. But it's not like Men in Tights, you know. It's not no. Although Men in Tights so is making good. fun of it, like that's right. the one that they're parroting. But yeah, um, no. But it's it's far and away the best Robin Hood movie. Mm-hmm. It's romantic. It's charming. It's mm-hmm. it's dashing. It's got it's got. Um, Rathburn, dude. What's his yeah. name? I was going to say him wrong. Basil Rathburn. Yeah. Ugh. So, so good. good. Olivia de Havilland. Mm-hmm. Can't go I can, wrong. For some reason, one of the moments that I think about a lot from that movie is when uh, it's like the introduction of Friar Tuck. Uh, yes. And he's like, give me back my mutton joint. And he's, yes. Yes. He's got the sword. That's a sound bite in my head often. Uh-huh. Like if if someone like takes some of my food, I have to like mm-hmm. someone will, like the just urge. eat eat one of my French fries, and I'm like, give me back my mutton. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that movie so much. I haven't watched it in forever. Mm-hmm. Great yeah. movie. Yeah. Great movie. Well, I think we picked out some great ones. I think we did too. I know that there's some that we missed. Like I know. Yeah. If we had but, to do TV shows, it would just be full of Bear McCreary. So that's <laughs> probably because he did Outlander and Black <gasps> Sails. He did not do Outlander. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, no yeah. wonder that music slaps. <laughs> like the like the whole the whole um, dance of the Druids thing. Yeah. That's oh my him. Gosh. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. That's why Bear McCreary is one of my favorite composers for sure right now. Yeah. He's great, and I he didn't did know like, that. Oh. the music for the for the God of War game, the new the two new mm. ones. Um, yeah, he's great. Love that guy. He's really phenomenal. And with the Rings of Power also, which has great, and, like whatever your qualms are with that show, the music is outstanding. So you know what I love is that his name is Bear. Yeah, and he could play the perfect Bayorn. Like, his aesthetic and vibe <laughs> yeah. is just Bayorn. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And his name is Bear. 
fire. <laughs> Which I love. Cool. Yeah. Well. Hey. I, I guess it's on to the usual. Yeah, I think we've made some great choices too. So. Very good. Okay. Well, let's let's uh, do the what you watching, playing, reading, all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Well, for watching, we finished Banana Fish. Thank you. <laughs> it's so dark, y'all. Man, I got and some the ending serious is... ick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the ick factor is through the roof. And the ending is just... So it doesn't, sad. It doesn't have a satisfying ending. It's done beautifully. Like, I feel like the animation yeah. of the last... Like sequence, yeah, yeah, it's great, but it's awful. Oh, <laughs> so like if you want, man, that's not the kind of escapism I usually try to indulge in. I'll just no. Say. <laughs> in fact, it's like something I usually actively avoid, but it's okay. <laughs> something different. Um, I don't want Hope to feel bad since it was no, quick. but I think she no. also f- is feeling the. Ooh, so we finished Banana Fish, and we're going to move on to something new. Uh, actually, tomorrow at the time of recording this. I know. Um, and excited. I'm excited about it. We'll talk about it later because I don't remember the title for it. Um, and I don't even know. Yeah. Also, I started watching One Piece. <gasps> you did not. Um, uh, One Piece is actually, it's really good. I know it's incredibly long. It's like longer mm-hmm. than all the content of Critical Role. And mm-hmm. it's okay. I'm here for it. It is okay. I can I can chew through it as 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 much as I want for as long as I want, and so True. long as I watch like more than one episode a week, I'll eventually catch up. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Eventually, I will. It's just a math thing. Um, but no, it's actually really good. The theme song is the theme song slaps. It's actually really it nice. it gives me some Hunter Hunter vibes. Like that's the the era that I can tell it comes out of. Yeah. Um, it is a little bit dated. Like some of the jokes they make early on are like, like sketchville. It's nineteen ninety five, and we're fat shaming because I was like, when this show started, you know, like yeah. it. It's just unfortunately a thing. But anyway, um, One Piece has been fun. I've been really enjoying oh. it. And like the nineties and early aughts were like prime fat shaming eras. So. And like diet culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Um, but it's pirate themed. I'm here for it. Yeah. Um, but it's not pirate themed in the way that Vinland Saga is Viking themed. Like it's not historical. It's its own separate goofy world with all these it's weird like creatures. The pirates who don't do anything. Kind. <laughs> that's actually yeah. That's great. <laughs> that's actually a great way to think about it. Um, especially right now, they're just kind of like figuring their lives out. Yeah. But um, cool. also critical role. Uh, Critical Role Campaign 3. Mm. Um, great stuff happening there. Dude. Um, that's pretty much it for my watching because my playing has taken up so much of my free time, mm. mm-hmm. which you can all guess what that is. But for reading, <laughs> um, we finished The Republic of Thieves Woo-hoo! for the read-along, and we're moving on to A Magic Steeped in Poison. Um, still almost done with Promise Neverland. I'm on like the last couple volumes for that. Nice. Um, so I'll finish that up soon. Um you have also, to watch that, okay? You have to watch it. I'll watch it after I read it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you could watch the first season now, because, like, you're beyond where the first season was. But right. True. Anyway. Um, also, at Barnes & Noble yesterday, I picked up the next uh, Mighty Nine Origins for Molly Mock. Um, <gasps> yep, it's out now. So I picked that up, and I also used an Audible credit for the Nine Eyes of Lucian. Um, mm, I think nice. I'm going to do... That audiobook first because that's like pre Molly Mock. So I'll like mm-hmm. listen to that and then I'll read. Is it? Well, because it's Lucian. Who's, yeah, but Lucian's after Molly Mock. But also before. Right. Because that's who it's he confusing. was before Molly Mock clawed his way out of the, the grave. Yeah, you're right. Um, <sighs> Trippy stuff, man. Yeah, man. So I'm going to start with the audiobook for that and then I will do the comic for Molly Mock uh, cool. Origins. Um, but that's kind of cheating because I haven't actually read those things yet. I'm just excited about it, so I'm mentioning it. That's right. Um, for playing, still playing D and I'm like ninety percent sure we're gonna get a TPK in the next session. <laughs> well, uh, oh, for your D and I thought you meant for Critical Role, and I was like, what? No, 
I got distracted. <laughs> Did I miss something in the last Critical Role episode? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, we're like raiding this castle, and we have killed so many just grunts. I have two spell slots left, and I'm the healer. And everyone is like half dead. <laughs> and we have like no healing potions. Uh -oh. And we still haven't even hit like the, I guess, quote unquote, boss room. Like wherever they're hiding, there's like an evil wizard and a half dragon. And they probably have henchmen there too. Like, no, this is not going to go well. I'm like, if we try to fight them, we're probably going to get slaughtered. So I'm maybe going to pitch running away. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But anyway. I think yes. <laughs> um, we will see how that goes. Um, and then also playing Tears of the Kingdom, which I know where Ganondorf is. I just got to go kill him now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I just got to go take him out. Uh, but so, I'm going to take so my time. So it's not like, sorry, it's not like in Breath of the Wild where like, like we knew where Ganon was the whole time in Breath of the Wild. Like we always knew right. he was in the castle. It's not like that right. in Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know. Because, I mean, in theory, I don't know, I haven't gone to the area where he's supposed to be yet, mm. but I think, so I don't know if it's actually accessible until you hit this point in the game. Uh, gotcha. um, maybe it is. I don't know. If you could just guess, run straight there after the tutorial. Hmm. I guess I don't know for Breath of the Wild if it's accessible either. I just chose to not, because it was it so is. overwhelming. It is. You can You can literally, like wake up in the cave and run straight to Ganon if you really if you wanted to gosh I feel like um, I'd die so fast I think well I think that it's well maybe after the tutorial like you get the yeah. paraglider <laughs> right well because you can't um, actually get out of the high plateau until after you've done that so you can run straight from the great plateau to Ganon in the castle yeah once you're done with the tutorial area but anyway hmm. um I don't know I if was that's still the case naked then one. So I'd have to go fight Ganon naked if I did that. Um, anyway. But yeah, so Tears of the Kingdom has taken up a lot of my free time. Have you have you defeated all of the shrines? No. <laughs> That's why I'm saying when it, now that I know where he is, I'll probably take my time. and Because I know there's a ton <laughs> of side quests that I still want to finish that I haven't yeah. done yet. Um, a bunch of sh There's like 152 shrines. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you like what the total numbers are. It's 152 shrines. I know that for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, anyway, that's where I'm at. I could beat it now if I wanted to, but I'm going to hold off. <laughs> okay. We're going to wait. Okay. Or maybe I'll just go beat it so that I can, I can like see the final cutscene and see how the story ends. And then I can like go back and do all the fun things. I don't know. I mean, that's what I did. After yeah. I beat Ganon, I went and did, finished all the side quests and found all the shrines for, not for a breath, Tears of the Kingdom, but for Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. How about you? So for me, I'm going to do watching first this time. Mm -hmm. Even though I normally do reading first. Um, I watched, well, I bit the bullet and I bought a subscription for Dropout because it was on sale and TikTok was that. serving me so many ads. I don't know why it was serving me so many ads, but it knew that I needed it. So I got yeah. Dropout. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I watched A Court of Fae and Flowers, which is Abria's, Abria, Abria Iyengard's, like, Regency fantasy. Nice. And it is, dude, it's so good. And I got so choked up. I'm, like, oh. sobbing at the end, and Abria's getting choked up, like, describing the final, whatever. It's so good. Like, it, I feel changed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even saying uh, that to be funny. Well, I'm being dead serious. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Highly recommend. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also started watching A Crown of Candy because I really want to watch The Ravening War. That Same. Matt DM for, but I want to know the backstory. So I know. Like I started it and then I was like, oh, wait, this is like tied into this other one that they did. Yeah. I'm not going to get like all the inside jokes they're going to say. I need to wait. So right. I'm with you with that. Yep, so I started, I which I had already started the first episode on YouTube, because the first one's available on YouTube, but mm -hmm. I restarted it. Um, so yeah, and so far it's very good. It's very funny. Nice. Because they're all candy. <laughs> um, and then, of course, Critical Role Campaign 3. That mm -hmm. is crazy. <laughs> but it's so have good you, are to you have caught them up? all. Yeah, 
But they're all back together again, which Yay, is so they're wonderful. they're all back together. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this week to see what happens. And the four-sided dive yesterday was really good. So. Oh, I didn't know there... I need to watch that. I didn't know there was one. Yeah. Lovely. Really I know what I'm going to watch all... while I... You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Team Asilra, so it was all of them. It was great. Nice. Um, yeah, we finished Banana Fish. Uh... I don't think I have anything else for watching. I was like trying to rack my brain before we started recording and I could not, I know, I feel like I have watched something else, but I don't know what it is. So Mm -hmm. I know that I have things that I really want to watch because several things dropped and I just haven't gotten to them yet. So maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Um, For reading, yes, we finished The Republic of Thieves, which was super good. If you haven't read it, um, if you haven't read any of the Scott Lynch books, highly recommend Mm-hmm. Um, and you can follow along with our read-alongs because um, mm-hmm. they're still available even though we're done with them, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm still working on Finally Seen by Kelly Yang. Um, I have not been reading as much as I would like to, mostly because I couldn't read and watch A Court of Fae and Flowers, and that had a vice grip on my heart for <laughs> however many hours <laughs> that mm-hmm. was. Um, and then for playing... Ori and the Blind Forest still. Which, last time just when I talked, I was stuck in this one section, which was so annoying. And so annoying to the point that I went back in my saved history so I could go outside of it. That's awesome. And try it again. Because I thought I broke it and did it in the wrong order. I didn't oh, break it. Been there. Yeah. I'm just an idiot. Because <laughs> you're shooting this like light thing. And if you mm-hmm. hold the button to shoot the light, you can aim it, which I didn't oh, know. Dang. So that could have taken me, should have taken me, two minutes, and it took me days. <laughs> <laughs> Just so annoying. It's uh, so, awesome. Anyway, it's still very fun and still very pretty. But um, Oh, and I am still listening to the World Beyond Numbers podcast. But it has different seasons, so I want to actually tell you what the season is that I'm on. Okay. Okay. So the first season of Worlds Beyond Number is called The Wizard, The Witch, and The Wild One. Ooh. Sounds interesting. It's very, very good. So I'm on episode six now. Nice. There's a fox familiar. (laughs) And I love him. Someday... It would be fun to play a character that has a familiar like that, or some kind of little buddy. Yeah. Someone with a little buddy. I feel like almost all the classes have a version where you can do that. Well, a lot of them do anyway. Is it technically a familiar if it is not... He's not a magical creature. He's an actual creature. But he was chosen, and now he can talk. And so he's learning words. That's adorable. And I love he that. is played by Brennan, which is just amazing. <laughs> I of love course, that. as the DM. So, it's very good. But, cool. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, I think that was a good episode. I think so, too. It was fun. We, did, we covered a lot of ground. We did. And I like talking to you. Well, that's... I'm gross. channeling... <laughs> I'm channeling... I don't know. Imogen. Sap. Imogen Tamalt. I'm channeling Forge Stone. <laughs> Eldritch Blast. Perfect. Um, I love it. I want to play a Laudna character someday. Like, she's so creepy. I know that I, like, do not like horror. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what it is about her little creepy vibes. That are, it's yeah. just so interesting. Yeah. yeah. I want to She's one of my it. favorites. She's one of my favorites she's... for sure. Yeah, I'm worried about her, but she is also one of my favorites. Same. Big same. <laughs> Dude, you have to watch the four sided dive because I will, for sure. They're gonna I'm sure they're gonna get into it, but it's so good. Anyway. I gotta go make dinner. Let's wrap this thing up. Okay, do the thing. Let's do it. Okay, well, I guess until next time, go listen to our playlist on YouTube of all of our favorite music mo- movie music things. Do it! It's we'll called Cinematic it. Music Moments. Lovely. Um, uh, yeah. So, go do that. We'll talk to you next time. There it is. 
Later. No, I, I say later. I know, you were dragging your feet, so I snatched it. I. <laughs> I hated that. <laughs>